This is our next project. It's um, a flying uh, pendulum escapement, I think is what it's called. When I was a kid, there was an antique shop uh, here in town that you could see one through the window. And I used to spend all kinds of time looking through the window and watching it uh, operate. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, but we make the, the oak base and this little pulley that's here on the front and the, the weight, of course. Uh, this is the, I made a ratchet right here to wind it with which uh, little barrel ratchet I guess you'd call it and uh, I was really pleased with the way uh, that that turned out the rods are made of steel all the other parts there's just some brass tubing here and these are just some brass that I had laying around and I think the pendulum actually is um, a piece of uh, copper alloy that I had laying around now I doubt anybody's ever really going to build one of these but let me just show you um, a few things this is this is the prototype that I use to develop, you know, get the measurements and all right, because some of them are kind of critical. Um, I, this is just a piece of wood up here and, you know, a piece of pine. And I just wrap the string around this tube um, right here to try to figure out my dimensions. So on this, um, let me show you this one because this is the one that I actually got correct. All right, so on here, <clears throat> these are eight inches apart from here to here. These there's a half inch gap in between here and here. Between the top of that post and the bottom of that rail right there is between, oh, it's uh, between 11 sixteenths and uh, three quarters. What determines, you want the, this has to be lower down than the tip of this because as this swings around, you want it to catch here. Now the length of this, on this one right here, see, I could vary it with that and it kind of depends on the weight of your pendulum and the weight that's pulling it down here as to how far out, how horizontal it's going to be when it swings around and whether it's going to catch here or not. If this is too long, it'll wrap around this part twice. And you only want it to go around once, so you got to make it short enough. And then uh, this has to be high enough that when it comes off of this one, it'll catch on this one and do the second twist before it moves around. The other thing that's kind of critical is, is you can't let your thread, you can't let your thread be so long that when it wraps around here, it comes back and hits your middle post. Now, it's not horizontal when it comes around there. It's more like this. So this, that's really about as long as I could make that uh, because these escapements, you know, you want them some uh, division, if you're making a clock, you want some division of time. Like, I would have liked for it to have been 20 seconds. Then when it makes three to go all the way, you know, do this one and this one, it's actually about 17 seconds. If, if I was trying to make a clock, I would need to have made it so it was like 20 seconds. So every time it does that three times, it's done a minute. That kind of makes sense. So anyway, as I said, I'm not making a clock, so I don't really care about that, but... I just wanted to take a second and kind of explain some of the important uh, considerations if you're going to try to design one of these. But let me get it, let me see if I can get it going. Alright, there it goes. Alright, so the series will follow this video and um, I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I did uh, making this and watching this thing run. Thank you for watching.